Nestled within its formidable natural defenses, these countries stand as a daunting challenge for any would-be invader. From treacherous terrains that confound even the most advanced military machinery to a populace whose indomitable spirit has withstood the tests of history, these nations have proven time and again to be a resilient fortress. Welcome everyone to Eventful Insights. That was an amazing introduction to our topic for today, Nick. Thanks, Josh. It's good to have another insightful discussion with you again. I think you'd be more excited to hear that we'd be talking about the most difficult countries to invade. That really gets me on the edge of my seat, Josh. But hold your horses, Nick. How about we test the knowledge of our audience first? I think that's a good idea. Here's the question. Which of these two countries has never been invaded before? A. Iceland or B. Japan? The right answer might not be so obvious, but watch until the end of the video to find out. That's right. But now we're talking about nations so fiercely independent, so geographically unforgiving, or just plain badass, that conquering them would be mission, impossible, even for the most seasoned military minds. Sounds like a spicy one, Nick. I'm ready to dive into the geopolitical firestorm. But before we name names, let's set some ground rules. What exactly makes a country invasion proof? Good point. We're not just looking for big armies or fancy tech. It's about a cocktail of factors. Terrain that swallows invaders whole, like the Himalayas or the Amazon. Unbreakable national spirits, fueled by centuries of resistance. And maybe, just maybe, a few unconventional advantages. Now you're talking. All right, let's crack open this geopolitical piñata and see what tough cookies fall out. First on our list is Switzerland. Switzerland's natural landscape, particularly the Alps, serves as more than just a picturesque backdrop. It functions as a formidable natural defense, with narrow passes, treacherous cliffs, and unpredictable weather creating challenging conditions for any potential invaders. Large-scale troop movement becomes a daunting task. Envisioning tanks navigating icy mountain roads, planes grappling with turbulent air currents, and infantry traversing snow-covered terrain while facing constant sniper threats. And if their geography wasn't already hard enough to invade, they have a few more advantages than that. The 19th century military strategy known as the National Redoubt is far from obsolete in Switzerland. It strategically employs the Alps as a final defensive line, incorporating fortified tunnels, hidden bunkers, and pre-prepared demolition points that could transform entire valleys into impassable obstacles. Switzerland goes beyond merely defending its territory. It actively shapes the battlefield to thwart potential attackers. In Switzerland, military readiness extends to every citizen, as each is a part-time soldier retaining their personal weapon, even after their service period concludes. This unique approach envisions not only a professional army, but an entire nation of well-trained and well-equipped civilians prepared to defend their homes. It reflects a deeply ingrained national identity, intertwined with a commitment to military preparedness. I wouldn't want to make an enemy of Switzerland after hearing those things, Josh. Any sensible country would think the same, Nick. Now on to our second country, Vietnam. Vietnam's distinctive landscape, often envisioned as a dense, humid jungle with sunlight struggling through the intertwined canopy, creates a challenging battleground. This natural fortress hinders supply lines, disrupts communication, and favors guerrilla tactics. Tanks find themselves bogged down in mud, helicopters are shredded by concealed foliage, and armies become disoriented, mere vulnerable shadows within the Emerald Labyrinth. What's more, the Vietnamese people, masters of guerrilla warfare for centuries, have elevated these tactics to an art form. Employing booby traps in the undergrowth and executing hit-and-run attacks from camouflaged positions they skillfully exploit the jungle's chaos to make every invader feel hunted, turning each step into a potential death sentence. We all know what happened when someone tried to invade Vietnam, don't we? The next on our list would be China. Of course China would be on this list. Confronting China in a potential invasion involves navigating a vast and diverse landscape that spans deserts, mountains, grasslands, and bustling metropolises. This diversity provides defenders with multiple challenging battlefields, from scorching deserts in the west to freezing mountains in the north and vast, rice-paddy-laden plains in the east. Each region demands adaptable tactics and logistics, presenting formidable challenges for invading forces. 
China's sheer size, with a population exceeding 1.4 billion, serves as both a potential human resource pool for its military and a force multiplier for national resistance. Centuries of history and cultural pride contribute to a strong sense of national identity, fostering a determined and motivated opponent. Overcoming a nation willing to commit its entire weight to a defensive struggle proves to be a monumental task. Other than that, with substantial investments in military technology, China has developed formidable capabilities in cyber warfare, drone technology, hypersonic missiles, and anti-access or area denial systems. Invaders would encounter sophisticated electronic countermeasures, long-range missile strikes, and potential attacks on supply lines and vital infrastructure. The presence of China's nuclear arsenal stands as a significant factor, serving as an unmistakable deterrent. While the prospect of nuclear war is unthinkable, it adds complexity to any potential invasion as launching an attack on a nuclear-armed nation is a risk that no prudent leader would take lightly. Wow, that was a lot to take in. Definitely, Nick. I know it's a lot of information for our audience, so why don't we take a short breather? Here's a trivia question, then. Who won in the Anglo-Zulu War of 1879? A. The British Empire, or B. The Zulu Kingdom? We won't be giving the correct answer just yet. Tune in until the end of this video to know the answer. It might even shock you. Now, back to our list. Our second most difficult country to invade would be North Korea. I was already thinking of that one before the list started. That's exactly why I included it in the list, Josh. Situated between the regional powerhouses of China and South Korea, North Korea occupies a critical position on the geopolitical chessboard. The prospect of invasion raises the specter of entangling these major players, potentially triggering a broader conflict with unpredictable repercussions, emphasizing the cautious approach even superpowers adopt when dealing with such matters. Much like Switzerland and Vietnam, North Korea boasts a rugged and mountainous terrain, featuring fortified peaks strategically positioned to oversee crucial choke points. The challenging landscape poses a significant obstacle to large-scale troop movements, transforming any military maneuver into a slow and perilous endeavor for potential invaders. Furthermore, invading North Korea isn't a straightforward mission. It involves navigating a complex network of underground tunnels. These subterranean passageways serve as essential conduits for troop movement, logistics, and surprise attacks, effectively turning the entire landscape into a potential ambush site. The ability of an adversary to vanish underground, reappear behind enemy lines, and launch attacks from unexpected angles complicates any invasion strategy. I think their decades of isolation and a pronounced military focus have transformed North Korea into a heavily fortified nation. Cities are equipped with anti-aircraft defenses, critical infrastructure is fortified against attacks, and a pervasive military presence underscores a nation constructed to repel invasion at every conceivable turn. This fortified state goes beyond mere border defense. It represents a comprehensive strategy geared towards thwarting any attempts at invasion. And finally, the first country in our list is kind of obvious. I think before Josh and I made this list, this was already the audience pick. We have the United States. The United States stands as one of the most formidable countries to invade, owing to a confluence of geographical, military, and economic factors. Geographically, it is surrounded by oceans to the east and west, bordered by Canada to the north and Mexico to the south. Its expansive and varied landscape, featuring formidable natural barriers like the Rocky Mountains and the Appalachian Mountains, poses a significant challenge for ground forces attempting penetration. The nation's considerable size and diverse climate further complicate invasion efforts. Well, that was very much expected. But for me, there are some honorable mentions as well. For instance, we have Russia. Due to its expansive land area, severe weather conditions, and formidable military presence, Russia presents another formidable challenge for potential invaders. And there's also Japan, which is an island nation and has invested sufficient budget for their defense as well. But let's always keep in mind, Countries can vary in their invasibility due to a combination of geographical, geopolitical, and socioeconomic factors. Nations with extensive land masses, natural barriers, challenging climates, and robust military capabilities, like the United States and Russia, are inherently more difficult to invade.
These features act as deterrents and make it arduous for potential aggressors to overcome these obstacles. On the other hand, countries that lack such geographical advantages, have strategic vulnerabilities, or face internal instability may be perceived as more susceptible to invasion. The complexity of global politics and the interplay of these factors contribute to the diverse spectrum of vulnerability among nations. I agree that it takes a lot of factors to know which country could be vulnerable to invasions and which are invincible. It really depends on a lot of elements. I just remembered the trivia question we asked a while ago. Which country has never been invaded before? And who won the Anglo-Zulu War of 1879, Josh? Oh, right. Iceland, which is relatively not the largest country out there, has surprisingly not been invaded before. As for the second question, that would be the Zulu Kingdom. Even with their smaller nation, they were able to raise their defenses and defeat the much larger British Empire. So, you see, it's not always about the size. Some countries might just take you by surprise. You wrapped that up so well, Josh. But I think we have to say goodbye to our viewers now. Unfortunately, I think that's the case, Nick. If you enjoyed it and you want to watch more videos like this, subscribe to our channel, give this video a thumbs up, and click the notification bell to get notified for our next videos. Thanks for watching.